I've been doing some experimentation with uh, MOSFET circuits and uh, I recently found this little gem right here basically uh, in the cell we don't want to have any sort of interference with this which is a square wave obviously you know for everyone who knows that yeah it's a square wave but it's a lot more complicated than that we want this square wave to end up in here and that sounds like a simpler task than you think but it's really not <coughs> So I've built that little circuit right there. Okay. And I put the MOSFET on a nice little heat sink. And uh, if you see my prototype board, <coughs> I recommend building one of these things. I just basically bolted the uh, breadboards onto a project box and now I can attach all kinds of things. Like you see I got this this um, this terminal block and I'm gonna put some potentiometers in there so I can I can have them at my, at my disposal. I see how convenient it makes it now I can just hook uh, external stuff to the breadboard without having to uh, worry about heat because if I put the MOSFET on here if I build it wrong or if I build it right and it's just too powerful the heat will melt out the board and who needs that so I've also got the circuit hooked up to a light bulb and I've got the output hooked up to the cell now first I'm going to show you what the output looks like when put across a light bulb which is a uh, compared to the cells a pretty high resistance so you see I have right here is the input wave coming from the wave tech uh, I got it at one kilohertz okay and the output trace is on the bottom there's no power right now so there's no wave so I'm just gonna turn on the, uh, the circuit turn on the power and you see now the output wave is right here and you, you know that's pretty damn close to a perfect square wave if you ask me we could go in and look at that see that nice sharp edge because that's the input wave and it's being translated pretty accurately to the output. Now that's just across the light bulb. Now one thing I want to show you guys is, is this. And this is something I just learned myself. This um, oscillos uh, sorry. This function generator has a uh, has the uh, the luxury of being able to manipulate the duty cycle of the pulse. Okay? So if I turn this knob I have to compensate. Okay. You can see I can change the pulse width. Now this is true pulse width modulation. So I know a lot of people out there are <coughs> saying, oh yeah, I got a PWM, I got a PWM. Well, this is really what PWM means. It's sending information by varying the pulse width. Now I want to show you something. Some people think that that changing the pulse width is actually changing the resonance in the cell based on them looking at the cell and saying, oh look, I'm getting more gas because it's at this frequency, at this pulse width. That's not necessarily true because I noticed that a lot of power supplies, they work on this principle by simply varying the width of the pulses that's being fed to the output but if you look at the light bulb you see it's pretty bright right and look at the input okay it's just that tiny little wave now you have to understand something too is that this circuit will invert the incoming okay now if I if I change the width okay if I make the width wider okay look what happens to the light bulb it dims okay so that's a wide pulse width 
and that's a short pulse width. How is that possible? It's because of the amount of voltage being fed to the load is being changed in the time domain. But it has nothing to do with resonance. So I'm not saying everyone's on the wrong track with resonance, but I am saying that you know we've got to be specific and we got to know every single angle so we can perfect getting the uh, finding the sweet spot in the cell. Anyway, that's that. If I turn it back, let's recalibrate the scope. There we go. So we got one kilohertz again. Okay, so here you, here you have with the light bulb connected and one kilohertz square wave. <coughs> you have a one kilohertz square wave coming out. Now watch what happens to the wave when I attach this cell right here, which is just two plates of stainless uh, submerged in a sodium bicarbonate electrolyte. Just watch what happens to the shape of the wave. Hold on. see that? Now that is an indication as to what's really happening inside of there. And another thing you got to notice too is that the cell puts a DC offset on the output of the wave. See what I mean? Okay, watch. You see that? Now if you look at this at the scope, each one of these represents 5 volts each one of these uh, blocks. So we're at about 5, 10, we're about 12 volts right there, which is the output. Oh yeah, let me just mention, this is a, a modified computer power supply that we're getting a power from, just so everyone knows. You see that? So you have a, 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 a negative, you have a 0 volt to 12 volt positive wave. That's not an AC wave. That's a uh, pure positive pulse wave. Now when we attach the cell, there's a, there's a DC offset. So the bottom of the wave starts at about 5 volts, and it only goes to about 10 volts. So you're only getting a 5 volt pulse into here, but you have a constant 5 volt undercurrent of power. Why does that happen? I'm not really sure. It might happen because uh, I know if you leave, if you take the power off of these guys, they do generate some kind of voltage. So maybe the maybe the wave is riding on top of it, or maybe the load is just too heavy because the resistance is so low and the MOSFET can't really cope with the low resistance. It could be that. Now I've left the light bulb in parallel. Just. Uh, actually just for convenience sake and uh, see what we got there and we can we can zoom in on this right here okay we can increase the frequency so we can really zoom in on that and right now we're at four kilohertz go to 10 kilohertz. Twenty kilohertz. Thirty kilohertz. Let's do magnification. You see that little ripple on top of the wave? Now if you notice that ripple is also on the input side. But let's see what happens if I disconnect the cell goes away see so my question is what is the cell doing to the circuit to add that ripple anyway that's just a, that's just a little curiosity I've discovered <coughs>